today, the Lord wants to change our eternal destination. Please tell someone beside you, the Lord wants you to have the right destination. And that is the will of God. Dalawa lang ang pupuntahan ng tao. Dalawa lang. Dalawa lang. It's either you go to heaven or to hell. You go to heaven, you get to be with God and God's people forever. You go to hell, you get to be with people who are so hate-worthy. You would be shocked. Hell is a place not of your friends and others will love you and care for you. It's not going to be a party. It's going to be a terrible uh, time of suffering uh, for people who rejected God. But today, the Lord gives us the opportunity to make things right before it's too late. Amen? Can we clap our hands to the Lord? Thank you, Lord. All right, so uh, the message today is the great joys of living with God in heaven. All right, um, those who love and obey God will experience unending joy with God in heaven. This is the promise of the Lord. You see, God wants you. Could you please tell someone beside you, God wants you. God, you, might, you may think God is too big, God is so perfect that He doesn't care about you. But in the mystery of God's great love, He actually wants you. He actually chose you. He actually selected you. He actually made sure by the sacrifice of His Son that you can have a way to be with Him. Those who love and obey God will experience unending joy with God, not in the place called hell, which is great suffering, but in heaven. Psalm 1611, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore uh, in this world we call this this existence now the life and then when we die the afterlife biblically that's not really correct uh, what the bible really describes is this is the before life this is the preparation and the true life is after you die where will you be now if you die and go to hell it's more of an existence than a life. But if you die and go to heaven, then there is fullness of joy. Amen. All right. The Lord wants you to know Him and enjoy Him forever. Okay, let those words sink in. Most of us think that God is just interested in us fulfilling religious laws. Most of us think that God is just interested in us, you know, doing what He says so that He can kind of get some attention and so on. But God is a relational, loving God. He wants us to know Him and know in the language of the Bible, it's always a relational term. It's a term of love and relationship. He wants us to know Him and to enjoy Him. John 17, 3, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And Psalm 73, 24 to 26 talks about the love relationship that is to be there. Verse 25 says, Who am I, am I in heaven but you? There is nothing on earth that I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And one influential Christian historical document says, and I love this, it says, The chief aim of man is to love God and to enjoy Him forever. The next slide, please. The chief aim of man is to love God and to enjoy Him forever. And that is the will of God. Could you please tell someone, God wants you to love Him and to enjoy Him forever. Amen. Now, some people think that uh, if I will be with God, uh, can I have an option, please? <laughs> can I choose to rather not be with God? Uh, I think God is the most boring person <laughs> being in the universe. I mean, all He cares about are right and wrong. There's not black and white. Everything is black and white. There's not even gray and so on. By the way, the Bible talks about gray things too, all right? That everything is black and white. But the point there is that God is not a boring being. God is not a, 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 a uh, a person who is, you know, so out of touch. He is, in fact, the most joy-giving person. So let's talk about briefly why being with God is the most joy-giving thing in all creation. And the point of all of this is for us to capture the idea that God is such a wonderful being that to be with Him is the most blessed thing. Amen? That is our goal. Okay, number one, uh, why being with God is the most joy-giving thing in all creation is because God is life. Say life. All right, life. God is life. Most of us know existence. 
We don't know life. And for me, this is something. I grew up in a religious background too. So for me, uh, much of life is about doing what is right, avoiding what is wrong, and trying to please God enough so at least I can avoid hell. I'm not even that concerned with heaven. At least I can avoid hell. That is what most people with backgrounds like me and perhaps probably you have. But the Bible says, no, God is life. And life means enthusiasm, life means energy, life means joy, peace, and so on. That is God, that is life. John 1, 1 to 4 talks about Jesus, for example. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. Without Him, nothing was made. It was made for Him was life. Say life! And the life was the light of man. Uh, Genesis 2, well, then the Lord God formed the man, that's Adam, of dust from the ground and breathed into his nose with the breath of life. And man became a living being. Most people uh, really do not understand that. I'm trying to understand it in a deeper way too. But most people are just, really just existing. They're really like living dead, like people who are walking dead and so on. But life means that you feel hopeful, you feel alive. When you wake up, you're positive. Hindi mo kailangan mga pimo na para mabuhi ka. Hindi mo kailangan mag whatever makeup mo na para you feel beautiful or whatever. You are alive. Inside of you, there's energy, positivity, and so on. You were in heaven would experience that life. Ang center po na heaven is God, and that light, that energy will emanate uh, from Him and spread throughout all of the heavens, and it will be our joy to be impacted by that. Uh, number two, uh, uh, being with God in heaven is the most joy-giving thing because God is love. Say love. All of us need love. All of us want love, and so God, who is perfect love is there and we will be with him imagine a world where god who is love and people who know and love him who are also filled with love are there and everything is positive everyone is caring everyone is sincere everyone is unselfish everyone is generous no one lies to you. No one wants to take from you. you want, no one wants to take advantage of you. Imagine that kind of world. And that is where God is. And that is where we will enjoy with Him forever. So First John 4, 8. Uh, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And so on. So it is a very sacrificial kind of love. This love was made manifest among us. God sent His one and only Son uh, into the world that we might live, we might have life through Him. Romans 5, uh, 8 to 10 talks about God showing His love for us. You know, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. If someone that is willing to die for you with full knowledge of all of the implications, that person loves you. Okay? Kung lang siya, namatay lang siya sa iyo mo, maybe that's another thing. But God who knows all of the implications says, I'm willing to give my son. Jesus knowing all of the implications, I'm willing to volunteer. Yan, pagmamahal talaga. Imagine being surrounded by that. Being filled by that. That becoming the whole atmosphere where you live. It is a very joyful thing. Amen. Uh, some of us uh, have very happy reunions with our, our relatives and friends. Yeah, uh, and others, family natin and so on. Imagine a world na multiply mo yan a thousand times. Everything is positive and everything is good. That is what will be in the presence of God. And so God will be at the center of it. We're going to have a blast in heaven with God. Number three, because God, uh, being with God is the most joyful thing because God is the sum total of man's aspirations, hopes, and dreams. Uh, we live in a world where people think that they... Uh, are looking for the ultimate when in reality they're just looking for the shadows, the samples, the uh, uh, imperfect foretastes. They're looking for something that is really just a copy of the original. The Bible says that what we're looking for, love, friendship, etc they are, we, when we look for those we are actually looking for god hindi natin alam nung pangalan kala natin sex ang tawag doon 
pera ang tawag doon, power ang tawag doon, ang pangalan pala nun, God. God, it's a summary of man's hopes, dreams, and aspirations. When we find God, we find life, we find everything that we have always desired from the very beginning on the, on the inside of us. Haggai 2.7, And I will shake all nations, and they will come, and they shall come to the desire of of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of all. Sino yung desire of all nations? It's Jesus. Siya talaga yung dream natin. Gusto mo ng magandang bahay din sa mundo, nag-iipon ka, grabing investment mo, nag, you know, magkanong monthly mo, whatever. Actually, ang gusto mo talaga, bahay na kasama mo si Lord. Amen. Lahat ng mga ginagawa natin to you know, make ourselves happy to fulfill ourselves really is a way of seeking God. He is really the true uh, sense or essence of what we're looking for and pursuing. Matthew 13, 44 to 46 talks about a treasure hidden in a field which someone found and covered up. Then he goes and sells all he has, buys that field with joy. And then he talks about a merchant in search for fine pearls. So finding one pearl of great value went and sold all he had and bought that field. See, Jesus po yun. Jesus is the one we're looking for. When we find Him, we find life, we find our dreams fulfilled, we find everything that we have always desired for. Amen. Palabakan po natin si Lord. Thank you, God. You are that fulfillment. The Lord wants all who love and obey Him to live forever with Him in heaven. We've said it earlier, John 14, 23, Jesus answered, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Amen. All right, let's talk about why you will have unbelievable joy with God in heaven. I like to make this fast, all right? So many people have been deceived by Satan that heaven to them is really a very boring place. Uh, I don't think I like to be there. I would rather be in Boracay or in the SM Lanang Mall. I think it's more fun there. Yes, there's Starbucks, there's, uh, you know, there's movies, there's Wi-Fi and so on. But the Bible describes a place where God lives. And those who love and obey Him will live forever with Him. And I want to kind of just give you a picture of that to hopefully inspire you to run after God, to give your life to Him because when you find Him, you find all of these things as well. Um, and why you will have unbelievable joy with God in heaven? Number one, heaven will be a place of perfect love between Christ and His bride, the church. If you're a follower, a believer in Jesus, you're a part of His bride, you're a part of the church. Heaven is a place of perfect love. Nandun lahat ng hinahanap natin. Ephesians 5, 25, uh, Ephesians 5, 31, 32 talks about Christ and the church and that bridegroom bride relation yung pagmamahal ni Lord Revelation 21 9 to 10 talks about uh, that's at the end of verse 9 come I will show you the bride the wife of the Lamb that's the church that's the believers that's you and me put together corporately verse 10 and he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming out of heaven from God when you're in heaven you will be filled with love Absolutely no hatred, absolutely no revenge, absolutely no competition, absolutely no uh, intrigues or anything, just perfect love. Amen. Number two, uh, there is nothing that is negative or wrong in heaven. Imagine a world where everything is just right. Everything is perfect in the sense that there's nothing wrong. Revelation 21, 1 to 5. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy seed in New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. That's a negative thing. God will remove that. And that shall be no more. That's negative. God will remove that. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. God will remove that for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Imagine a world. Hindi kailangan ng hospital. Hindi kailangan ng ponsya. Hindi kailangan ng 911. Or any such place. There is absolutely nothing. No tears. Hindi mo kailangan ng doctor love. <laughs> Whatever. Everything is just perfect full of love, full of life, and so on. Number three, in heaven, all creation will be functioning properly. Right now, we live in a world na may mga bagyo, may mga lindol, may mga heat wave, may mga kung ano-anong meron. But, and, and the animals can, can harm us. 
Some people are bitten by dogs and die, etc. So those things are things that, that, are, uh, that are only true now, but in heaven, in the new earth, it will not be the case. Uh, Isaiah 11, uh, 6 to 9 talks about uh, the wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. Jumping to verse 8, the infant, ang bata, will play near the cobras then. The young child will put his son into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover. Imagine a world where you and your children will play with lions. You will play with the Pteranosaurus dinosaur, <laughs> and they will be kind to you. They will be your friends, and so on. Uh, amazing. Number four, in heaven you will live in a spectacular city that is the ultimate in beauty and glory in every way. Right now, you and I are trying to build our houses, uh, acquire houses, improve our houses, and so on. But we will live forever in a world that is so perfect, in a city that is so perfect, in homes that are perfect. Verse 9, Revelation 20, 21 9 onwards. The second part of verse 9, come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. That's you and me, the followers of Jesus, the believers in Jesus. And it talks about the city. Verse 11, it's shown me the glory of God. It is pillars just like of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear, a crystal. Um, and then it jumping to uh, verse uh, 19, the foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. And then jumping to verse 21, the 12 gates of the city were 12 pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. Imagine the gate of the city was of gold, a spear as transparent glass, uh, etc. Et so you will live in a place that is of great beauty. Some people right now, including us, we are dreaming of a time that we can go to Singapore Airport. Maganda daw kasi, kasi yung Singapore Airport lang, tourist spot na daw yung bago na lang ngayon. No? You can just imagine yan, napakaliit lang yan. Parang si R lang yan sa, sa, sa heaven. The Bible says the great street of the city where you will live, streets of gold. Karon sa akong lawas, ang gold, kini lang akong wedding ring. <laughs> Kung pansin nyo, nakasigur yung Arios gamay, dito, kalsada lang, gold. Amen. I Nakaatun ako sa Macau sa hotel ni Jackie Chan. If you may have been there in Macau, yung hotel na may mga gold bars, Jackie, that's Jackie Chan's hotel, konti lang yun, nagkalat-kalat lang. Ito talaga buong kasada. <laughs> Imagine mo, it's made of pure gold. Anyway, the point is, you will have a great, great city, a great, great residence in heaven, and that is your inheritance if you're a follower of Jesus. Amen. Palapakan natin si Lord. Thank you, God. Number five, you will have perfect health in your body, soul, and spirit. Imagine you being able to enjoy God and people who love God in a perfect world because you also have a perfect body and a perfect soul. Hindi ka na magkakasakit, hindi ka na madidepress, etc. Walang disability, etc. Philippians 3, 20, 21. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like His glorious body. Hebrews 12, 22 onwards, talks about you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the innumerable angels in festival gathering, to the assembly of the firstborn, that's also the followers of Jesus, another term to describe us, who are enrolled in heaven, our names are listed, listed in the book of life, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. Amen. Yung wala na tayong mga mood swing. <laughs> We're not always trying to make a positive environment so we can be happy. In fact, yun yung mga ko, di ba? Ayaw natin. Makasungot kayo. <laughs> mga di, wala kayong kwenta, no? You make my life so stressful. Wala nang ganun sa langit. Amen. Number six, you will enjoy rewards and regain lost opportunities from God. Amazing, no? But yung when we serve God, God will reward us great abundant rewards and will regain lost opportunities uh, from God. The Lord will give that to us because He is a good, good God. Luke 6.21, for example, Blessed are you who are hungry now, you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and they exclude you and revile you and spurn you as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that they live for joy. Great is your reward in heaven. You my lost opportunities, I will give you Lord John. If you lost, for example, a father because your father died young, 
you will probably have a father figure. Kung hindi nasa heaven yung father mo eventually because he eventually found the Lord or whatever. Or he, he was, you know, later on in life kung umalis siya and then he found the Lord. But the point is, if you lost the chance of living and enjoying being raised by a father who loved you because, you know, like he was siguro or whatever, then you can have that in heaven. The regaining of lost opportunities when it was caused by unrighteousness or it was because you surrendered something in the service of Christ. It was imposed on you, etc. You will recover that. You will regain that. Matthew 19, 28 to 30. Jesus said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you have followed me all straight on twelve thrones, judging. So you will be promoted in the new world, the new creation, the new city. And everyone who has left houses or brothers, sisters or father or mother, all children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. So even our sacrifices on this earth, sometimes kulang na kami ng family time and sometimes we just have to decide to, you know, to change that, to correct that. But to the extent that it is unavoidable, for us or for you, the Lord will give that back to you in heaven. Amen? He sabi na, He refers, others will be refreshed. Kung ikasa man nagkulang kanya nito, ibabalik ni Lord sa iyo sa langit. Amen? You will have eternity to enjoy. Amen? Seven, much more. And so, much more. There will be so much more that you will enjoy. The point is, you will be in a great, awesome, wonderful life with God in heaven when you follow Him. And that is our destination. Amen? Palapahan natin si Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to the last part, which is how to make sure you'll be allowed to enjoy heaven forever with God. Not everyone will enjoy heaven forever with God. Hindi po lahat. Not everyone is ready. Not everyone is qualified. Not everyone is fit. Not everyone is, uh, will, you know, is, is, will go there. Because meron pong mga quote-unquote uh, responses that are uh, needed. So number one, there are only four things. Number one is love God. Say love God. Whether you like it or not, God will allow in His residence, in His great city, only those who love Him, who want Him. And so the Bible says you, are to, you and I are to love God. Matthew 22, 37 to 40. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, uh, and, and, and with soul and with all your mind. And Hebrews 9, 28 talks about Christ having offered once for all the, the sins of many will appear a second time. Baba leaks us on earth. Uh, and we will see Him not to deal with sin but to save those who are eagerly waiting for Him. And so Jesus Christ will come back and He will come back and bring to heaven to enjoy the new earth together with Him only those who are eagerly waiting for Him. Yun lang pong gustong makasama siya. So let's love God because if you love God, then you can be there with Him. Number two, how to make sure you will be with God forever in heaven is obey God. Say obey God. Now I know for many people the word obey is a bad word. But I tell you, it's a bad word, not because it's a bad word. It's a bad word because we are so lawless and rebellious. For example, sa company, no? When people say, kadami dami namang rules, kadami namang requirements, kadami namang reports, etc. Actually, what they're saying is, I do not want to follow anyone. I want to follow myself. I do not want to follow the, what the boss wants or the owner wants. I want to do what I want. And, and so that is really an attitude that shows our rebellion. But you know, if you're rebellious, you cannot be with God. If you are not disobe if you are disobedient, you cannot be with God. Uh, Matthew 7, 21 to 23, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, so I mean Jesus, will enter the kingdom of heaven. No? Uh, born again, born again, that Jesus, Jesus, pero wala ta nagasunod. But only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Love is shown in obedience. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, Jesus, Jesus, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Alam niyo po, if you want to be with God forever in heaven, if you want to avoid hell, then you have to obey Him. Kung gusto mo lang, love, love ka lang, money lang, power lang, good works, pero ikaw ang magsunod, hindi si Lord, then you will miss out. Number three, put your trust in Jesus Christ for acceptance with God. Put your trust in Jesus Christ for acceptance with God. Many people put their trust in good works. Okay? Good works are good if they're 
expression of your love for God. Good works are good if you genuinely do that because you love people. But good works are not good if you want them to become your ticket to heaven. If you want them to become the payment for your sins, to be accepted by God, they are not good. Um, uh, uh, John 6, 28 to 29, Then they said to him, to Jesus, What must we do to be doing the works of God? 29, Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in Him whom He has sent. Gusto mo magtrabaho? You want to work for God? Then believe in Jesus. Yun ang trabaho na gusto niya. Amen? Make Jesus the Lord of your life. Surrender your life to Him. Say, Jesus, today, I give my life to Jesus today. I surrender. Ikaw ang boss, hindi ako. I will follow you. I will trust you. I will believe in you. Fourth and the last, stay faithful to God throughout your life. Stay faithful to God throughout your life. If you are here, you've been a quote-unquote Christian for some time already, please stay faithful to God because the Bible says, I don't care what some theologians told you, some Bible study told you, the Word of God, kahit along balik-balik tarin mo ng Bible, you can never deny it. The Bible says, yung lang ang makakaabot sa dulo, sila lang ang may premyo. He who endures to the end will be saved. Let's just talk about a very practical analogy. Yung retirement in your company or in the government. No? Alam ka naman, nagtrabaho ka lang ng 10 years, tapos ayaw mo na, <laughs> nag-ahul ka na. Tapos pagdating mo ng 65, gusto mo may retirement. Kasi di swerte ka. <laughs> Bakit ka may retirement? May lump sum ka, meron kang pension. Hindi ka nagtrabaho ng tarong, iniwan mo ang trabaho mo. Amen? If you abandon a relationship, your relationship with Jesus Christ, you will not make it. Stay faithful to God. Tell someone, stay faithful to God. Revelation 22, 14 and 15. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. Blessed are the dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Ang mga bakakon at ikon, impyerno ang padulngan. Revelation 21, 7 to 8. Those, the one who conquers will have this heritage and I will be his God and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second, that's the hell that we're talking, that was acted on. You saw great presentation kanina. Um, verse 7 here talks about the one who conquers. Say conquer! Okay, all of us have weaknesses and limitations and immaturities, but if you want to make it to heaven, you have to conquer them. Do you pwede sabihin, well, ganito talaga ako, nung bata pa ako eh. Pamilya ko, lahat kami ganito. May pagka-immoral talaga kami. May pagka-mayabang talaga kami. <laughs> Parang, ako, oh, mas ay pagka-rebelde talaga kami. Hindi mo pwede sabihin yan. If you don't overcome that, sorry, you will not make it. You have to stay faithful to God. You have to run the course, stay faithful, make it until the end so that you can be accepted. Hindi yan madali, patutulungan ka ni Lord. So in summary conclusion, uh, we are all going to die. It's just a question of when, sooner or later. Let us all be ready to meet our Creator and Judge. If you're living for God and thus are ready to face God in the final judgment that is coming soon, then keep living for Him. And if your right, life is not right with God, then today is the day, now is the time, this is the place to get that right with God. And so I want to encourage you to do that. Kung yung iyong destination ay hindi maliwanag, ay yung destination ay hindi sure, ngayon dinala ka nilo ito para pwede mong isure. And that is in the love and mercy and kindness of God, He's offering eternal life to you. He's offering to you salvation, a change of final destination. As I close this part, uh, the message actually, um, uh, I want to talk, talk about the true story of, of a lady named Ruth Anna Metzgar. This is a true story. Let me read because it's so well written. Pede kong i-restate, pero it's so well written by Randy Alcorn. I would rather read it for you. So let, let this is her story. Ruth Anna Metzgar, a professional singer, tells a story that illustrates the importance of having our names written in the book. In the book of life, yung kanina, in heaven. Several years ago, she was asked to sing at the wedding of a very wealthy man. According to the invitation, the reception would be held on the top of the two floors of Shadow's Columbia Tower, the northwest tallest skyscraper at that time. She and her husband, Roy, were excited about attending. At the reception, waiters in tuxedos offered luscious appetizers and exotic beverages. 
The bride and groom approached a beautiful glass and brass staircase that led to the top floor. Someone ceremoniously cut a satin ribbon draped across the bottom of the stairs. They announced the wedding feast was about to begin. Bride and groom ascended the stairs, followed by their guests. At the top of the stairs, a maitre d with a bound book greeted the guests outside the doors. May I have your name, please? I am Ruthana Metzgar, and this is my husband, Roy. He searched the M's because Metzgar begins with M's. I'm not finding it. Would you spell your name, please? Ruthana spelled her name slowly. After searching the book, the Mater D looked up and said, I'm sorry, but your name isn't here. There must be some mistake, Ruthana replied. I'm the singer. I sang for this wedding. The gentleman answered, It doesn't matter who you are or what you did. Without your name in the book, you cannot attend the banquet. He motioned to a waiter and said, Show these people to the service elevator, please. The mescars followed the waiter past beautifully decorated tables laden with shrimp, whole smoked salmon, and magnificent carved ice sculptures. Adjacent to the banquet era was an orchestra preparing to perform. The musicians all dressed in dazzling white, tuxedos. The waiter led Ruthana and Roy to the service elevator, ushered them in, and pressed G for the parking garage. After locating their car and driving several miles in silence, Roy reached over and put his hand on Ruthana's arm. Sweetheart, what happened? When the invitation arrived, I was busy, Ruthana replied. I never bothered with a, a to RSVP. Besides, I was the singer. Surely I could go to the reception without returning the RSVP. Ruthana started to weep, not only because she had missed the most lavish banquet she'd ever been invited to, but also because she suddenly had a small taste of what it will be like someday for people as they stand before Christ and find their names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. And then Randy Alcorn makes these comments. Throughout the ages, countless people have been too busy to respond to Christ's invitation to his wedding banquet. Many assume that the good thing that they have done, perhaps attending church, being baptized, singing in the choir, helping people, will be enough to gain entry to heaven. But people who do not respond to Christ's invitation to forgive their sins are people whose names aren't written in the Lamb's book of life. To be denied entrance to heaven's wedding banquet will not just mean going down the service elevator to the garage. It will mean being cast outside into hell forever. In that day, no explanation or excuse will count. All that will matter is whether our names are written in the book. If they're not, we'll be turned away or rejected. Have you said yes to Christ's invitation to join him at the wedding feast and it's spend eternity with him in his house? If so, you have reason to rejoice. Heaven's gates will be open for you. If you have been putting off your response, your RSVP, or if you presume that you can enter heaven without responding to Christ's invitation, one day you will deeply regret it. Ngayon po, tayo ni Lord dito para meron tayong opportunity na maging ready Para yung ating final destination ay sigurado langit, hindi impyerno. Have you said yes to Jesus? Or have you been saying, later na lang, later na lang, puhon lang, puhon lang. Revelation 21, 27, but nothing unclean will ever enter it. Nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. By the way, the Bible also says that when your name is written in heaven, and later on, by a choice of your will, you persistently choose a lifestyle of sin, your name can be erased. So, pwedeng wala, tapos sulat kasi nagbelieve, nag-obey ka kay Lord. Pwedeng nandiyan na, pwedeng i-erase ulit. Kasi ayaw mo na kay Lord, tanggalin na ang pangalan mo, and so on. That's how it will be. And so, it's not unfair. In fact, it's just reality. Why live with people who don't like you? Okay, so when Jesus calls people, he will only welcome those who love him. Change final destination now while you can surrender your life to the Lord. And so ngayon po, gawin po natin yan. Let's surrender our lives to the Lord God. Today I want to be ready. Lord, help me. Help me, God. Help me, God. Can you close your eyes as we come before the Lord in prayer today? 
Our Father in heaven, we thank you that you're a God of love. You're a God of destiny. Meaning you want us to be with you because you love us. You want us, Lord God, to find in you the longings of our hearts, the true longings of our souls, which is to find you and love and life and everything that are in you. And so, Lord, today we pray that you will heal our lives. We pray that you will change us. We pray that you will forgive us. Help us right now as we spend this time in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, we are in the presence of the Lord God, and He is here through the Holy Spirit. Would you give your life to Him today? Would you respond to His invitation? Will you say yes to Him today? Would you allow Him to take you? Would you allow the angels of God to write your name in the Lamb's book of life so that when the Lord uh, comes back, or you face God in the judgment, your name will be there and you can enter heaven and enjoy heaven forever with God. So today, if you know, hindi tama ang relationship mo kay Lord. If you know, may mga bagay na mali sa buhay mo. If you know, hindi mo pa talaga sinusunod si Lord. You're not living for God. You are not really living in obedience to the Lord. You're not loving God, obeying God, trusting Him and staying faithful to Him then today the Lord is calling you. Now is the time for response. Huwag mong sayangin ang sinasabi ni Lord ngayon. Huwag mong sayangin ang gracia ni Lord, ang grace ni Lord ngayon. Give your life to the Lord. Surrender your life to Jesus. Tell Him today, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, change my destination. Change my destination. I will live for you now and forever. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, if you know, hindi tama ang relationship mo kay Lord, sabihan mo siya ngayon, buksan mo ang mga buhanga mo, open your mouth, and let the Lord hear your words. Tell God, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Jesus, forgive me. I've been selfish. I've been rebellious. I've been, Lord God, it's just all been about me. I'm just living for myself. But Lord, today I want to live for you. Lord, forgive me for just living for love or or money or power or even good works now i say lord god i will live for you i will live for you come on open your mouth pray to the lord give your life to jesus surrender yourself to him surrender yourself to him. come on just talk to the lord he is beside you through the holy spirit he is listening to you just tell him lord forgive my sins Akong itugin, akong kinabuhi sa imo ha. Ako nang biyan ng sala. Ako nang biyan ng daang kinabuhi. Lord, and I will change. I will love you. I will obey you. I will trust you. I will stay faithful to you. Come on, would you do that? Don't waste this time. Don't say, pohon lang. Next time maybe. Now is the time. This is the place. Tell God, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Jesus, I surrender my life. Di pa sa'yo lang. Ako itugin, akong kinabuhi sa imo ha. Ginoong Diyos. Give your life to the Lord today. Give your life to the Lord. Thank you, God. Have mercy on us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Right now, if you're here and you have a prayer request, financial need, something with your health, nakaisakit, something with your family, your business, your work, your studies, raise your hand and we will ask the Lord to bless you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, would you bless those who are raising their hands? Lord, would you release your blessing, God? Lord, would you release, Lord God, Lord, finances, healing for sickness. Would you release success for our businesses? Would you bless our studies, our board exam review? Would you bless our businesses, Lord, in the name of Jesus? Salamat, Lord. Lord, for every need, let the abundance of God come. For every prayer request, let your answer come. Salamat, Lord God. Lord, we love you, God, and we thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone would say, Amen and Amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Can we close in prayer right now? Can we close our eyes, raise our hands, and in 30 seconds, we'll be dismissed. And now the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and the Lord 
bless you with his peace. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone would say, Amen and Amen. Though we are not able to gather physically during this time, we encourage the faithful giving of tithes and offerings. Understand that your giving matters. Here are some channels where you can give your tithes and offerings. You may do a bank deposit in the following branches that bears the account name The Lighthouse Christian Fellowship. Union Bank, Rizal Branch. Account number 10017003901. China Bank, Recto Branch. Account number 172252801. Metro Bank, Rizal Branch. Account number 058305862859 PNB Victoria Plaza Branch Account number 4017100 Kindly provide a copy of a screenshot of your deposit slip to the Lighthouse Facebook page for verification Another channel of giving is through GCash. Please use these numbers 0998 May God bless you as you faithfully give your tithes and offerings.